for this last session. So we are going to try to respect the schedule in the end. Our presentations will be a little shorter. Uh, they require a bit of attention because now it's how much you have to pay to use that. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll be a little shorter with that. And uh, also we'll have uh, uh, Mr. Bird, our project officer, that will say a few words also at the end. Okay? So, what do we have? What did we present today? It's not perfect, but it's what we have. Uh, so we have a Piper scalable child model with some validation setups, environment, software integration. Uh, we have the Piper framework, applications, and modules. We have an interactive application uh, that's doing some stuff that, that you saw, and I hope that interested you. We have scanning technologies, we have uh, positioning, and, um, and we have all that that's kind of integrated with some s methods that are actually state-of-the-art methods, uh, numerical methods. Um, there are other deliverables that we have not uh, described in here uh, today. Uh, I'll touch on them really quickly, uh, because as we are going to fold that. We have shown a few applications. Uh, we need a lot more applications to be able to do that. Uh, we've had a lot of questions like, have you tried this, have you tried that? This is a three and a half year project. And so uh, when we started, we had no software. We had an FE model, you saw where we started, and uh, you see where we are now. Uh, people are really busy and worked really hard, and, uh, but uh, there is a time now for uh, um, application and things like that. Uh, there are limitations uh, that are known. Um, particular for children and tree prediction. This is something that we always label as uh, after the project work, out of scope. Um, there is limited a priori knowledge into the uh, positioning playground and also into the scaling. And some of the questions were about that. And in the end, it's all down to that, which is we're going to give you people and us people the possibility to integrate you know, knowledge into this uh, process. Uh, help you to do that, but what, what is the knowledge that we have? And uh, there are also limitations uh, that are purely related to uh, software engineering, uh, even if we uh, did even with Microsoft today because um, PowerPoint crashed once and uh, the demo crashed once. Uh, this, is, this is a research project, so this is not like the quality software you would expect from uh, um, um, a professional software vendor that spends a lot of time doing that and that's been doing that for 20 years. It's still, we've run some demos, we've run a lot of things, people have used them, and, uh, and, and we've moved already forward considerably, but you need to remember that. For the question, is it whether, state of, whether it is state of the art? I'll let you answer that question. Uh, you know the state of the art, I know the state of the art, um, and, uh, and I think uh, you will have answers uh, for that on that question. So these are our results and our limitations. So where do we go now? So we've said since the beginning it was going to be open source. So what is shown is what we have, meaning like we have uh, 60 days to provide our um, reports to the commission. And during that period, we will update some of the stuff, uh, probably some bug fix, uh, small updates about documentation, hopefully finishing the, uh, the uh, um, workflow that's based on landmarks. Uh, but that's it. And, uh, and the reports are, are actually, the deli our deliverables are the same, so the reports will be uh, mainly descriptive stuff. So, so uh, you are here and we are here too, and then what's next? So what's next is this, so, uh, which is the open source part of it, which is we said from the project, at the latest, on the end of the project, it will be open source. So we are five days in advance, and, uh, which is nice. <laughs> And, uh, and so the question is, what is available, under which license, what can I do with it, and so on and so forth. Uh, what's the future work, who's going to provide support, and so on and so forth. This is what this session is dedicated to, which is um, uh, basically start discussing with you about what, what, what should happen, because like, hey, uh, we're done with this, it's, it's a kickoff. It's a kickoff of that project. So. What's available? Most of everything done in Piper. That's the rule. That was the rule of the project. That's the rule that we uh, said from the beginning. What's not public is mainly going to be things that are uh, for which there is third party IP that's involved. And, uh, and we will see what that means. 
public open source uh, code models, metadata, uh, supporting data, including databases, uh, documentation, useful reports, because if it's a you know intermediate report to say that this is the first version when the last version is available, it's not quite useful. So, uh, so informa useful information will be moved into the, the uh, documentation. We will have also a few things that were not done in Piper, uh, but that people agreed to release uh, jointly with Piper. Uh, not many, but we have still a, a little bit. Uh, one, it's soon. So what you will have on the USB key on your out is version uh, 0.99. Uh, this is a lot more difficult than a report. We need to do all slides, actually and uh, to prepare a, a release, so, but we, we are there. Publication process is ongoing, there were uh, students, there were all kinds of people working on that. We have decided that we will release as open source, uh, so you will be able to do whatever you want with it, including to try to publish before the people that did the work actually publish. Uh, it is entirely your right, and, uh, and we just ask you to be kind for them, um, but that's all we can do. So we will probably have version 1.0.0, 1.1, maybe 1.02 uh, before the 60-day period, which is end of June. What about the license? So this is important. Uh, this is like at the time when we are exhausted and, uh, and probably the time when you don't want to read them, it's legal stuff and you're so tired of it. They are truly essential for us. It, they are truly essential and uh, open source is not public domain. It's very different. Uh, we need to be all aware of that. You have rights, but not all the rights maybe that you would like. You have obligations, they are strong uh, also. And they are legally binding. And they have been tested in courts. So that's what it means. We chose only standard licenses, meaning licenses that have been tested in court, I just said it. And, but also licenses for which you can be advised on what they mean. Uh, so I don't mean to scare you, but it's understand to understand. Uh, what you can do, and so we'll tell you how we understand these licenses. We can, you can tell us if we are inaccurate, and you can also uh, get legal advice on that. Why did we choose open source licenses? Uh, to try to ensure that tools and models, whatever we did, will always be available uh, for all. Uh, why? Because the tools that we are using have become too complex for the academic world. We don't get any credit anymore. And there is not a clear business model with it yet. And, uh, and that's just an observation. So for some people, some of these activities are considered to be non-competitive because people that are selling cars, they are not selling the human that is in the car. And they have joined, for example, through the GHBMC to do the human in the car. And, um, and this is not something that they competed on. So, um, so the issue is this. If you have a model, do you want to really have a PhD student and invest a lot of efforts uh, for the next three years into something where you don't know if at the end you will still have a license to run it. And so that's something that can prevent people from putting efforts in it, into modification and into stuff. And they, despite that, there is a lot of work going on into that. So, uh, so if you fix something in an open source uh, way, the, the, you know, the way we look at it, uh, you will always have access to it, but others will have access to it too. And this is a legal obligation. So using this model allows us to reduce so, the risk of duplication. Uh, why? Because you can try to have two open source versions which are doing exactly the same thing. But why would you need two? If you, if you have one and that you know that you can keep it, that uh, it won't be taken away from you, maybe you don't need two. In the end, it's up to people to choose. Uh, this licensing model allows to survive end of projects, which we are now, funding these continuities and all kinds of little stuff. And it saves a lot on legal counseling and legal efforts, because once the, once the license is decided, that's it. The rules are clear and they will continue. Every time you want to do something with it, you don't need to go back to your legal services and ask, can I do that? And uh, this is something that's actually pretty nice. Open source is also useful for a number of things, we're not saying for everything, but for a number of things related to reproducibility. Because there is always the uh, old joke, which is everybody believes the experimental data except the one that did the experiment, and for the model it's the opposite. And so, uh, which is, uh, well, you understood. So, uh, so why? Because these models are very complex, you publish them, and then uh, there's no way nobody can reproduce that. 
and reproducibility, you have to go back to what it was. Initially, peer review was that your peer were repeating the experiment. It was not that they were reading your paper uh, on the train or on the plane. So, uh, and we're all the same, so. Anyways, you can look at dummies. D dummies, you get a dummy, you put it apart. You look what's inside. You borrow it, you try it. You look at a model, you can't do that. But the drawings of the dummy are public, and so uh, even Humanetics agreed to it. So, uh, okay. And um, so we want also make the service uh, on with these tools possible independently from the developers, which is today we're nice people, but maybe tomorrow uh, we're in a bad mood, or people change, institution changes, and uh, and so on and so forth. And so uh, and so we should not be tied to the developers. That's at least the vision for what we've done here for these processes. So licenses, these are the four words. So for software, framework, modules, SSM toolbox, there is one exception, I will talk about it later. Uh, the license that's selected is the, so I feel it would be like the Academy Awards, you know. <laughs> Anyways, is a new general public license version two. Uh, so you may copy, distribute, modify the software as long as you track changes, dates in source file, any modification to or software including, via a compiler, a GPL license code must also be made available under the same license, the GPL. So what it means is that if you mix this code that's in there with any other software tools, you will have to release your tools under the GPL. That's contaminating, and uh, that's a choice. Uh, we need this choice. But your company or your institution already runs software like this at your place because most of you, um, most of the people that have uh, clusters, uh, run uh, clusters that have the Linux kernel. Most of everyone in the room has used MeshLab, which is under the same license, and so on and so forth. We chose the version 2, not the 3, for compatibility reason with other software and libraries that are used inside. And, and that's the main reason. So that's a readable summary, but you can go back to the uh, original page can get advised on it, and so on and so forth. So if I, summary, if I summarize, you can use it, you can copy it for free, you can sell it if you want, but if you sell it and you find someone to buy it, uh, they will be able to give it for free if they want. And uh, you can sell support, you can fix the bugs, but if you uh, distribute it, the bug fix, you will have to release the code with the fix. And uh, that's what it is, under the same license. Uh, what, so that's your obligations. The obligations, because we are giving that, is that we can't take those rights away from you, which is uh, if tomorrow the people change and things like this, that's it, that's, that's written. It's like, hey, uh, people may not be happy with that, but that's too late. The exception is the Anatomy DB, which is under a more liberal license. Uh, because you could use it, you could link it to a commercial software because we really like people to find a way to standardize a little bit the naming and stuff that would facilitate incredibly the metadata work. Environments that have been shown briefly, they are under GPL v3 plus a liability clause that we copied from uh, our Swedish friends from the Viva project. <laughs> we asked actually, can we copy it because it's well written and stuff, so we just copied it. So it's done. Uh, so there are some minor differences, I won't go in there. Uh, so you can distribute an encrypted model if you want, but uh, hey, you will have to provide the source with it, so that's fine. Uh, so there is another car environment coming and uh, ch child seat models from uh, VFSB, uh, Heiko work in the past, that it will release under the same version that will be available on the website. Piper child model, it's even more restrictive. And the reason for that, we added a clause that we discussed for a long time, which is a clause on open science, which is, we just said it would be nice to be able to reproduce the model, but so if you're gonna publish with that, why don't you publish the changes that you did to it? Because you know what, maybe then it will be reproducible, because in, in the meantime, otherwise it won't be. And, and publishing is not uh, necessarily distributing. So, so this is what we chose. So you can read the legal clause in, uh, in detail. Uh, we hope it's well written. P lawyering p people wrote that, and uh, we hope it's fine. There is a clarification also that the, what means modification, we're allowed to add uh, clarification and things like that in the GPL version three. Uh, there is also something that say uh, it doesn't contaminate your car. Your car is not a derivative derivated from the, uh, from the, uh, the FE model, obviously, and, uh, or your CRS or things like that. Read the clause. 
Piper data, uh, which is the supporting data, uh, will be available. Uh, so there is a reference model. We didn't talk so much about it. An anthropometric database and a bunch of other stuff. The data we generate in the other project will be under the uh, um, uh, Creative Commons attribution license. You can do a lot more things with it. You can even uh, you know, use it in things that are commercial and things like that without giving anything back. We chose this license because we don't want to take the risk that if you scale a model that's a commercial model to this data that you say that is derived. And that's something we were afraid of. So it's a lot more liberal. So you can do pretty much anything you want as long as you give credit and, uh, and that's about it. We have a bunch of other stuff. I won't go into the details there, including the child validation setups under Creative Commons also, because we'd love people to have other child models to run uh, this or tell us if we are wrong and so that we are able to compare. The case of metadata was discussed already several times. So what do we do? We are not completely sure. Why? Is there confidential information in it? Why? Well, it depends if how you declare confidential information. Is a, is a node number confidential in information? I don't know. It's certainly not a trade secret, but uh, is it confidential information? We don't know. Is a node coordinate com uh, confidential? Maybe not. Ten nodes, maybe. Where does it stop? I mean, you can go endless about discussions like that. That's why you start thinking that open source will save you a lot of time on lawyering because you will figure it out one time the first time and then you'll be done. But anyway, so we don't know unless the owner of the model clarifies. So what's needed? Probably not much. So model owners probably could, could be okay and clarify. It's like, do they really care if in the method of the file there is a node number? I mean, like, come on. But that's not our choice. That's not our models. And uh, actually, there could be nothing in the metadata if they, people agreed to use the same conventions for naming, for example. Hence, the anatomy DB stuff that's more open. Um, so the current status is easy. Open source models, child viva, open source, easy, done, check. GHBMC, we provide the data to GHBMC with non-exclusive rights. They can do whatever they want with it, CCBY license. We will see, um, we have had a lot of discussion that were very positive, and um, we'll see what they agreed to do and, uh, and answer with that. With SUMS, we have the same conversation. We had some uh, positive preliminary feedback. We're waiting for formal confirmation and uh, on what to do with the, uh, with the metadata. And there you can see where lawyering comes back. Every time you have a question about if I add two more nodes in it, uh, is it still going to be under the same license? So that's worth spending the time on the f slides that are before. I have a summary here. I won't go over it. Uh, there will be a list of deliverables. They will be put on the website as we go along and as we prepare them in the next 60-day period. Um, for now, you're going to have on the uh, USB key uh, the current version of the uh, software, the current version of the child models, current version of the environment, and uh, available only, uh, com compiled only for Windows 64 bit. Uh, no need to have administrative rights or anything, you just run it, and that's about it. Um, you need to remember the licenses, which is if you don't agree with the licenses, uh, you know, uh, then you should think about whether you should use it. And um, so you should figure it out because they, they are legally binding. Where to get them? So the, uh, the source will be hosted on the GitLab of Inria. Uh, that's kindly uh, uh, agreed to uh, keep hosting that with a continuous integration server, which is quite a bit of resources. It's nice that they let us do that. And, um, and so it will be open in the next few days. This will be announced on the website. Documentation is already included in the software package and will be online, uh, editable on the Git or later on the wiki. And that's it. That's what we are going to have and give you. And now, what do we do with it? And so Philippe is going to tell you. <laughs> okay, so we are still there. But we are going to talk about what will come next. What happens? We will for sure continue the effort to, to make some results and go move forward. We had some uh, proposals that uh, were sent, for example, to H2020, either by us or by others. And uh, we are aware of other proposals, even, even in the US, that uh, are supposed or likely to use uh, Piper. 
uh, we are very, very happy to announce that uh, there is some effort uh, by uh, PDB to, <coughs> to position the child model as, as a pedestrian and to move it from LS9 only to PAM. And uh, next week, we are very happy that uh, Thomas Jeanak, uh, that uh, you saw many times on the on the stage uh, will start a PhD with uh, a joint PhD with UCBL and uh, and lab, and so we've got some small feedbacks about m many people, and we we have the feeling that uh, there is some uh, room for a possible community. Modification of uh, the output of uh, the project are very likely. It's allowed. Philip explained the license. The risk that we identified is the, the isolated users. That is to say that the user that would be in front of his computer with his, this very nice tool, but uh, lack of support, no roadmap, no clear vision of uh, what, where the project is going. And the next risk, of course, is dissipation by forking, and Philip mentioned it, and some good reason not to do it. So. What we're going to do, we're going to start an open source project. That is to say that starting from today, there will be an open source project distinct from the EU project. And this aims at handling some of the issues that we saw before and aims to continue promoting the Piper vision. The guideline for contributions Regarding the, the software, of course, there will be some tests on the uh, code review. Uh, the, 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 the rules and the vision of the framework should be, uh, should be met. And uh, we think that uh, the fact that uh, it's a modular structure can help. Regarding the child model, the validation, as mentioned by Philippe, are provided. So you can run the, the, the validation cases, you can play with it, and if you come up with some proposal for improvement, then the rule is that you as a contributor will have to come and explain the reason for proposing such a modification, rerun the validation in order to check the global effect on the model, and of course maybe get some reasonable help from us at least for the beginning, but it's very basic rule. And it regarding the metadata, as Philip mentioned, it, the IP is not fully clear right now for us, so any contribution will have to take care of the IP. Okay? This should change quite soon. I hope so. So, who are we? We are an ad hoc group with decision-making process, okay? So it's composed of the board and technical groups. The board will take care of the vision, the strategy, and the communication. We will try to come up with some roadmaps. We will show you some drafts that we already have. We will communicate, educate, encourage, animate, coordinate. All that in order to try to reduce the chance of takeover or forking. But of course, if we've got roadmaps, the, the board will try to steer toward the roadmap vision. As Philip mentioned, the license, does open source license doesn't mean that it's, uh, it's uh, public domain. So th the board will have to take care of uh, enforcing the license organizing support and, of course, recognize in-kind contribution. The technical groups will uh, decide to accept contribution, create authoritative source and versions, open with rules. The current composition uh, of the group so far is the people from most Piper partners. To join, any volunteer would have to need to share the vision and the values, to contribute something in a significant manner. And everyone from the group will have to agree that this, this uh, person can uh, join the group. 
its cooptation. And as I just said, it's people, it's not organization. This uh, volunteer will need to be practically involved and need to respect the code of conduct. It's a standard one that is available on the internet. Uh, the required qualities, prominent participants that would help promote, organize and contribute, and not just come with some uh, hidden uh, agenda in his mind just to promote another project or whatever. It has to be frank and to completely adhere to these uh, rules. And of course have relevant knowledge and sometimes available. Where can you find us? It's Piper Project, but it's not EU anymore, it's .org, okay? So, so far it's a very basic uh, uh, presentation, but uh, it's gonna start and leave. And uh, it will link, uh, it will include the links to documentation, tutorials, news, data, etc. Now the vision, the vision is really simple. It's to promote the use of human body models to improve transportation safety. And in, in this very small sentence, you've got two main information. First, the use of human body models. It means that the models are available. Adult, child, the targeted side, you, you had some examples with uh, some uh, personalization, and in the targeting position. It's not like a family of dummy anymore. It's really the dummy that we are targeting. And th the means to make this available, for the adult, uh, as Philip mentioned, we wanted to, to, to start from what was available. So there was the TOOM community, there was the GHBMC community, so there was no mean to, to go further, except to the personalization and positioning. But regarding the child, there was a need, so it the, the gap was filled. Many people uh, talked about uh, uh, practices, and both for modeling and uh, personalization and uh, positioning. As it was mentioned, it, the, the, the models are what they are today, but using the tool and gaining experience, we probably will come up with some um, common practices and guidelines. And of course, the maintenance and continuous improvement will be part of this activity. The second part is to improve transportation safety. All the examples that you had today were through the road safety. It, it was the, the basis and the start of this project. You saw standard occupants, adults and children, in both passive and safety and pre-crash. You saw see also an example with pedestrian. But we believe that potentially this project can move toward being useful to other road users, such, that the, such as the two-wheelers, other types of transportation, probably, with trains and aircrafts, and maybe to connect activities like racing or things like that. And also to uh, target specific population like obese or any specific, uh, other specific population. So on the website, what I just explained to you, you will find the vision with this simple sentence and the four bullets. It's really simple. What you will see also is the core values. We think that we will, we will use open science and open source as a means to secure access forever. So there's no need for you to start a competition with this. You will get it and you will continue to get it. You can start a new PhD, you will not lose the license in the middle of it. And it's a good reason also to share efforts. And the second core value is to be inclusive and work with existing models. Tooms, GHBMC, it was said from the scratch that the, the tool would be a uh, model agnosis. And uh, the same for the codes and the same for the practice. We will not tell you, you saw that in some cases there are so several solutions. We will not tell you how to do the job, but of course you're welcome when you will gain experience to feed us back. 
Let's, let's now take a look at uh, what uh, the, 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 the roadmap could be and why could I contribute. If we start with the tools, the first step will be to add some workflows and documentation from users. There was a lot of work done by the programmers, but they were both programming and writing down the documentation. And in some cases, the view from the programmer that knows exactly what is, what is in the box and the view from the user that starts from the crash can be slightly different. So this will have a huge value. The second thing will be to define guidelines for modeling such that the genes to allow positioning and personalization will be in the models. It was partially done uh, with the child model. It has to go back to the tombs and uh, GHBMC community, probably. It developed metadata for more models. We spoke about, about it. And of course, update the, the metadata when either the models or the tools are updated. Collect more data to drive the tools. You saw that some uh, trials were done to get some uh, 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 basic data to do the statistical shape models. There is still a lot to be done. We can enlarge samples. We spoke about this very nice uh, uh, database that was provided by Caesar, but it's only 100 people inside, so it, it can definitely be enlarged, and it can also target specific populations. Of course, there is room for adding some functionalities, new modules, and a complete batch mode, for example. Let's now move on to the child model. And one more time, really, we are very, very pleased to announce that PDB is starting the translation to other codes, PAM crash and Abacus, and to position it as a pedestrian. But there are still other codes. So I know that there's someone from another code in the room. You're welcome to go back to your management and try to make them think about moving to this code as well. And the other possibility is, of course, to continue validation. This very nice child model, the number of validation cases can be enlarged. And then work on injury prediction. Because so far, we've got a very nice model, but we are, not, we are still far from the injury prediction. Expand continuous integration, and for example, add Cora or any other uh, score method. The, the, the community animation and support, the main objective is, of course, to maintain the repository for code, manage information, etc. Label the versions, and uh, for the child model, it uh, can be probably easier because of the community. We've got the feeling that uh, the community is really ready to, to get the model, use it, and send some information forward. For the software, it's a bit more challenging because you have to go. To, to, to you have a learning curve that can be stiff at the beginning, and then some uh, uh, modification. And we would like to uh, have a yearly user meeting. There will be some scientific communications. The website will, of course, be maintained, and uh, we will do our best to respond to the mailing list and merge contributions in time, I mean. How much can we expect? The answer is very clear and very easy. The amount will depend on who will do and who will pay. <laughs> so, so far, we do not have any other funding secured for maintenance. It will depend on the goodwill from the project participant. And the good news is that we've got some permanent personnel from several institutions, and we will do our best to keep the project alive. That is to say that we will keep some resources and some small funding to maintain the project alive, but we still need some major additional contribution. And that's why the users could help, because the user community can be quite large. So if we add all the contributions, even if some of them are small, but from a large audience, then we, we could get quite a, a good momentum. As of today, some very high technical expertise is available, including for development tasks. And so far, Caesar volunteered to provide some uh, support and training services and some light development. And we had 
the same proposal from an atascope for AV development. Who could contribute? We tried to list, and it's, it was very easy. We took the, the participant list, all of you that uh, registered, and we took a look. So we've got representatives from the car industry, both OEMs and suppliers. We've got the child restaurant system manufacturers, human body model communities with STEM, GHBMC, but any other. The code vendors, we are very happy to see them, and some dis distributors, the European Commission, <laughs> and uh, the government, of course, the universities through PhD, master projects, or whatever, or even through data already available. Hey guys, if you've got some data available in your back in your university, you're welcome to share and to add it in the database such that it can be larger. And it's very efficient, very quick. And of course, insurances. So basically, basically there are only a few people from this room that can hide. <laughs> All the other ones can join. Why should I contribute? The impulse is worth 3.8 million. It was co-founded by the European Commission. And there's a lot of previous expertise inside. So it's not just a detail. It was really a, a big start and a big impulse. So we should do some effort to keep the momentum. It's easier to keep it than to start something. Open source, it was mentioned many times, but it's really a key point. It will guarantee that no one can stop the momentum using IP. It has happened in the past for many projects Many of us know that it cannot happen this time. It's a good reason to contribute. Pivot's experience on human modeling shows the strength of the coordination of efforts to prevent dissipation. I will give you a very basic example. I'm from Renault, and uh, together with PSA and the Parisian uh, University, almost 20 years ago, we started to do some uh, FEM modeling of the human body model. It was very nice, we were very happy. But it was time consuming and so costly. So we said, okay, no, it's not the solution. We went to the European Commission with a bunch of other uh, universities and uh, people from uh, the industry, and we set up the UMOS 1 and 2 projects, and we developed this project. It was far better, it went quicker, but finally, it was even too much for a European consortium. And then that's the reason why the car industry uh, cooperated and set up a consortium to have the GHBMC develop w worldwide. And then we could pick up the resources where th the best skilled people or teams were to get the best results in short time and have all the same model instead of we call it dissipation, doing exactly the same, all of us. Ford had, had, had the models, R Renault and PSA had one, uh, Nissan had one. Everyone had the same type of quality of model, and everyone was paying the same amount of money for nothing. It was all the same. Just we were very proud we had IP, and we could hide it. So this is the next point. Maintenance of numerous tools means less resources left for innovation. So let's put the effort all together such that we, we don't have to, to maintain many, many tools and just do maintenance instead of innovation. How can I contribute? <coughs> Very easy. Either you do it yourself and you share it. You can do tutorials, metadata, as, as soon as you understand that finally what the documentation meant by this paragraph once you, you've understood it and you've got a clever idea to make it clear please do it and send it back so you can do t tutorials you can develop metadata you can do some new application you can provide some data i mean anthropometry is very very useful for this uh, tool if you don't do it yourself then you can contract with someone who can do it and then share it. Because if you contract with, let's, let's say, Caesar or in real since uh, they are the two identified volunteers, but you put some uh, restrictive contract on it, 
they will not be in a position to share it. You, it will be your decision. So please, contract with them, <laughs> but think that it's open source and you should s send it back as a contribution. And one more time, please, take a look back in your office, what you already have, and recycle every existing data that could be helpful in that direction and share it. I'm done. So I think it's...